Elon Musk selling shares on Twitter and people don't like that. Coming up here on The Job. Hi folks, Alex Klingel Haver here, Central Wealth Advisors. It's 1147 here in the middle part of the country on Thursday. It's December 15th, 2022. Here's your morning job around the economic headlines of the world. I want to talk all about Elon Musk real quick. Uh, Elon sold like $3.6 billion of Tesla stock and folks are not pleased. Listen, if you have a billionaire engineer who's running your company and all of your faith in the company is placed on one guy, as long as you run it, you shouldn't really care how much stock he owns. People sell stock for a variety of reasons. In this case, he wants to buy additional shares of, uh, he wants to buy Twitter, right? He just, he, he does own Twitter, right? So he needs to finance that purchase. He's selling part of one company to have control over another. He still controls both companies. Ultimately, if you're betting on Tesla, you're betting 10 years from now, 15 years from now, right? If you're investing in the company, that's what you're doing. Who cares if you sell shares? Take a step back, reanalyze the company, reanalyze the fundamentals. One guy selling shares doesn't change your investment thesis, or really shouldn't. If it does, that's, that's on you. Uh, Bank of England, half percent rate hike here this morning. ECB did the same thing. They're just following the Fed, right? Here, um, if you have pounds, if you have euros, and ECB doesn't hike at the same rate as the Fed, well, then that creates really disparity in interest rates. You have big disparity in interest rates where U.S. rates are higher than European rates. Well, that means dollars flow to the U.S. and you get, like earlier in this year, when the dollar was up like 16% this year. It's not a good thing. Um, Europe's going to have to eat our inflation. And if that means it sends their economy into a recession and the U.S. is spared hyperinflation, that's a move that the U.S. Federal Reserve will take. Sorry, Europe. Jerome looking out for himself. Last but not least, let's talk about jobless claims. Data kind of becoming really choppy here. Um, it came in good. Initial employment, 211,000. It's, it's a pretty good number. Um, let's talk about the December jobs data. Let's talk about EIA data. For both the EIA, which tells us every week about oil and for jobs uh, here in the US, looking at unemployment, um, you're starting to see more manipulation of the data. You're seeing more adjustments, seeing more seasonal stuff, right? You're seeing you know, monthly revisions upwards, you're seeing undercounting in other places. I'm beginning to look at this data and say, hmm, why are we getting worse at collecting data? Right? You shouldn't have crazy variability in job data. I understand the real world's very variable, but you, your adjustments shouldn't be getting more variable. And they are. You're getting big, bigger adjustments to job data, you're getting bigger adjustments to oil data. That's a bad thing. You should be getting better at your job and having more accurate predictions versus having less accurate predictions and having big readjustments. Just something to think about. Something I'll be keeping an eye on. If you want some additional info throughout the week, feel free to find me on the internet. I'm out there. Till then, you guys have a great rest of your Thursday. I'm out.